All right, guys. Joining us on the show is an absolute MMA legend, Strike Force and UFC champion, one of the best middleweights to ever do it, friend of the show, in what an incredible performance his last outing in the cage was. Luke Rockhold, the Tiger King himself. Welcome back to Submission Radio. Smashing some watermelon. How are you, man? Doing good. Just uh, starting to get back on my feet. I mean, not really on my feet, but just getting motivated to get in the gym. I haven't really able to really do much. I was so hurt from the fight. So I had like one week where I felt decent and then I had surgery. So I was down for another three weeks now. Finally getting it back. Yeah, man. Well, yeah, because we saw on Instagram stories, dude. Yeah, you were back, you were Ruka. You were sort of doing your thing on the medicine ball. Give us a little update on the leg, man. How's it feeling? And also, how's it feel to sort of get back in the gym? I know, like, how much you enjoy the training aspect of getting ready for fights and stuff. How did it feel to get back in there, um, sort of on a different note? Yeah, no, it's it's not a different note. It's all the same note. Mm -hmm. But no, definitely, I have everything. I gotta keep a good routine. Stay on, stay on point. Icing, a little, little ice on the ankle. Mm-hmm. Keep taking care of things, and uh, just kind of just, and then they're just doing functional stuff, man. And, like the body, like being off your ass for a month straight when with a bad foot injury, and you just gotta keep elevating. And when you're on your foot, and so it's just eating like shit, enjoying <laughs> life. Well, you, you deserve <laughs> it, man. I'm like, you know, I'm like, I did it for a minute, but now I'm ready to go. Yeah, okay, gotcha, gotcha. What's sort of the time frame, like, with, with the leg? I know you said you were pretty badly banged up. And uh, and what exactly was the surgery? Um, they have, there's two torn ligaments. Are they from the fight or not? But, and there's a couple of bone fragments chipped off. And my pinky toe, I, I had really messed it up before him. And, like, sublux and ruptured it with capsule and things and just, I think it was skateboarding a while back, but then I really fucked it up a little bit more in the fight. So they had to reconstruct that pinky toe. And it was like, got fucked up from the fight. It was some weird stuff. Got infected or something, too. Jeez. So it's, it's a dirty game we play. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they pulled my ankle back together and I got this like, bionic ankle. So it, feel, it feels good. It's starting to come back to life and I hope, hope it works better now. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting, man, because I guess yeah, you had those injuries from back in the day. And then, of course, the stuff that happened in the fight. So I wonder how it's going to feel when it heals up. But how did it sort of feel for you after the fight, getting the chance to sort of, even though you had the sore leg and you were healing up, getting the chance to enjoy some food, getting the chance to sort of take a little bit of a break. I saw you took a few trips out. You were able to sort of decompress a little. How did that, how did that feel for you after UFC 278? It always feels good, man. It's necessary, <laughs> Jim. You know, um, I think I, got, I feel like I earned it. Mm. So do my thing, but there's much to do, much more to do. Retirement. What do you mean, quote unquote retirement? I don't know. I mean, I'm just, just, there's tons of opportunity. I'm, I'm not looking to get out of shape in any way, shape, or form. I mean, I really still enjoy the training aspect, but I need a. I just don't want to do the part that really hurts me you know like yeah. the you know, like i'll do some boxing sparring but like you get into full mma sparring and like you know you just, everything starts <laughs> breaking down when you're fighting the bad dudes so i'm just gonna work on getting better getting better and just getting more myself I, I i really do enjoy being like the best i can be so whatever's not gonna hurt my body i'm gonna still do and i think i think so predominantly yeah boxing wrestling and just lay off the fucking kicking my kicking, kicking hurts. <laughs> fucking my legs. I just, I, I value my legs, and they're that far away from your heart. They keep, they're hard to work with. When you start fucking up your legs, you realize you don't want to do that anymore. Oh, 100%. Mm. It's not the kind of thing that you can uh, just like, well, you're walking every day. It's not the kind of thing where you're like, oh, I'll fuck this leg up and, you know, it'll be fine. <laughs> but the thing is, you threw so many leg kicks in the fight. And uh, fuck, I got to go back to that performance, man. Like, what a gutsy performance. You just kept coming. You fought so hard, man. And uh, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. We were pretty emotional here seeing you hang up the gloves and just the, the speech with Joe Rogan afterwards. How do you look back on that performance now, man, now that we're, uh, you know, what, around about a month uh, afterwards? Fight's a fight, right? You know, mm-hmm. it's hard. It's hard to prepare for a fight. 
in, especially at this age, like injuries start coming. I tore some cartilage and I strained some like strained cartilage here, this there. And so it's like prevents you from really pushing. And my toe was, you know, whole strain, you know, your body starts compromised over the years. And so it's hard to get to like, you know, it starts to break down as you start to push harder. And you know, you got to push harder because there's no room for error at the top of the game. And then it was just like, yeah, I wasn't really understanding of the altitude of how important it was going to be up there. I didn't, I didn't realize how high it was up there. I thought it was like 3,000, 4,000, but it does, does have an effect. And he landed a good shot. The first punch of the fight, I believe he broke my nose. And so I was like kind of like watery eyes and trying to figure it out. And he took me down and I was trying to get my bearings. By the time I got up, I was just breathing out my mouth. And that's at, at elevation, just like that with a broken nose. Not a great start, but that's the fight game, you know? And mm. I had to gut through it. I gutted through it. It was a little sloppy, but, you know, I think when I had the energy, I think you see, you know, if I had the energy and things were a little different. I mean, if the fight kept going, I was, start, I was starting to find my own rhythm in, in a funky way. But I think I would have finished him if it would have long. I think what people liked about it is there were times where you were clearly hurt. But you just kept coming. You just kept fighting so hard. Like, how the fuck did you reverse that position right at the very end of the fight? Right before you smeared your blood, you know, all over him. Like, what what was driving you in that moment? Honestly, I was controlling the fight, even on the ground. I knew you couldn't hurt me on the ground. So I was just, I was just saving energy. And I, I, I kind of went for a misinformed shot. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> now it's going to take too much you know, <laughs> I'm going to sit here, I'm going to let him advance, I'm going to let to get to a point, and then I'm going to fucking, you know, just get some energy back, and I'm going to reverse him. It's like, he's just dumb, and I knew I could, like, kind of bait him into situations, even if it looked bad for me on the ground, it's just like, I, he knew he had, didn't have much. I wish I rushed, I rushed the one time I had at the top position. I had it pretty sweet, I just, like, he just, he bridged out well. I would just rush my way through it. Yeah, well, it's kind of tricky, right, Luke, because you mentioned, like, you had the elevation, you had the injuries going into the fight, you had a super long training camp because this fight was moved a couple of times, and also Polo's one of the best guys in the world, and also, I imagine there would have been a little bit of cage rust as well, because you hadn't fought in a while, so I'm just wondering, like, now that you look back on it, how do you sort of separate the fact that it's time to retire from all the factors that maybe led you to not feeling the same in the performance that was sort of in that fight. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's hard. Mm. I'm telling you, going into that fight week, I was so beat down and just exhausted and men mentally broken from seven months of it. You know, it's like, is my body so ready? And it's hard to conceptualize walking into that cage when, you like, when you've been hurt so far along the track but just refused to pull away. Mm. You know, you destined to this thing that you've committed to so it's whatever happens happens kind of thing you just gotta go and it's not like where i wanted to be going into the fight no for sure you know i didn't coming back from that long that time off and not really doing a lot through covid so uh i i uh obviously i feel like i could do a lot better i feel like i could beat paul costa's ass any day of the week if i was back on my game it'd be over and i see the rest of the division i mean i feel like i'm getting better but I just don't want to get hurt anymore. It sucks. And then, then you walk, watch out for your health in the long run. Pretty, pretty. I've done a lot. Do I need to do more? <laughs> I don't know yet. I, let me let me get in the gym and keep keep moving, keep thinking. But if I get inspired, if someone inspires me to get back, and you know, you never know. Oh, little little bit of a tease. What 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 would that scenario even look like? Like. What would have to happen or what would have to, you know, what would inspire you to potentially come back? That Brazilian dude winning the title. <laughs> oh, yeah. Paulo Costa. <laughs> wait, wait. Alex Pereira or Paulo Costa? Alex Pereira. Right. You can have every wrestler in the fucking game just chomping at the bit to get that guy. <laughs> Randy Couture comes out of retirement. <laughs> hey, <everyone laughs> Let's go. Let's get the free belt. If he if he beat uh, Israel, do you think he, it'd be almost like a done thing for you? You'd be like, oh, fuck. Maybe I'll hurt the legs just a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. The only thing is you got to fight Robert Whitaker or some shit in between. It's like, fuck, it's going to hurt. Because mm. winner loses to Robert Whitaker, 
that shit hurts. It's just going to hurt. <laughs> We're going to fight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fucking hundred uh, percent. Just super, super quickly. Just quickly. Uh, speaking of fighting, don't fight with your rusty razor. When you're shaving that big schlong of yours, take care of it. It's the family jewels. Our good friends at Manscaped will help you be a big hairless winning machine. And when you unzip the pants, holy shit, jaws will drop. With the platinum package, with the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, the greatest Pound for pound grooming device ever made. The Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer. The Ultra Premium Body Wash. The Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo and Conditioner. The Ultra Premium Deodorant. The Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant. And the Crop Reviver Ball Spray Toner. Free gifts, which include free boxes and a free shed travel bag. And man, I tell you what. The anti-chafing ball deodorant and the, the ball spray toner, they keep you in the game at all times. Maybe you're impressing someone on a date, your lady, or even just want to smell nice. At practice, Manscaped have got you covered so you can be the best version of yourself yet. Isn't that right, Dennis? That's right, man. And that underwear and the shed travel bag, that, that's no joke. I use that stuff all the time. And I've still got the OG bag from back in the day when we started working with Manscaped. That thing oh. holds up like an absolute beast. You guys can get... 20% off and free shipping today with the code word submission. Go to Manscaped now and change your life with that platinum package forever. And guys, by the way, speaking of changing your lives, how about making some money on UFC 280? We're just talking about it a little bit. And I mean, the thing about it is you have that Sean O'Malley, Peter Young fight coming up. O'Malley at a plus 280, Peter Young minus 400. Where are you going to fall on that one? A lot of people trying to figure out if O'Malley is going to shock the world and take out Peter Young. Why not make some money in the process? Of course, you got Islam Mark Chef at a minus 172 versus Charles Oliveira at a plus 133. And you guys can get 100% match bonus right now with my bookie if you guys use the code word submission. Get a bonus all the way up to $1,000. That's right. All you got to do is use that promo code submission at my bookie now, Cass. Yeah, that's right, man. Make that money. Speaking of money, protect your money. Everybody's trying to steal your data and NordVPN are here to help you with that so you can change your IP address and nobody, including your internet service provider, can check your data, steal your data, or even see what kind of websites you are going on. You know exactly the ones that I'm talking about. Also, using NordVPN, you can change your geolocation on your computer to make your computer think that you're in a different country. We're in Australia, but hey, in the blink of an eye and one touch of a button, we could be in Brazil or Canada or whatever, enjoying their streaming services like Netflix, uh, all, all the things that American Netflix or British Netflix or Canadian Netflix have to offer. Also with a VPN, you can get things for cheaper. Hey, things cost different in different countries. So if you can make your computer think that you're in that country with said cheaper deals, you can now access those deals specifically for, you know, streaming services or online purchases or even flights. You can book the same flights on the same website and get them for cheaper because of the geolocation. Also, you get the threat protection thrown in there. And anytime you stream, there's no buffering or speed throttling, unlike with other VPNs. Get NordVPN. It's the absolute best. Isn't that right, Dennis? That's right, man. And you guys could try it right now risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee and this incredible deal where you guys get a massive, massive, huge discount, plus four months free if you guys go to nordvpn.com forward slash submission or click the link in the description below. Trust me, it's one of the best things you're going to be able to do for yourself. I'm in the process right now of having to change all my passwords because my data was stolen. Don't end up in the same position as me. It could be one of the most painful things that you'll have to do in quite some time. Go on with Nord VPN right now and secure yourself while saving money today. But Luke, you know, it's interesting now because obviously for Polo, being able to go on the cage with you, it's a huge thing for his career and it's taken his name value to the next level. I'm curious, man, what, what did you think of all this back and forth that he's been having with Hamza Shemaev? If they're almost getting into a fight and now they're sort of trying to build this fight uh, between each other. And also a lot of people think, you know, maybe Shemaev goes in there and is able to do to Costa what he's done to previous opponents, but you've been in there with Costa, you know, you know, the kind of skill level that he has. Do you think people are sort of overestimating Hamza sort of so Hamza's performance if that fight happens? Um, I think, I mean, I'm just not impressed with Hamza. It's how he carried himself fight week and missing weight by that much. that tells us so much about a person, you know, it's like the pressure is getting to you and you know, that you got a guy on the ground that you can't com com completely control like Nate Diaz. Yeah, that's going to pose a little bit of a threat. You can't, so you can wrestle him, but like, like you have to, there's, there's worrisome, you know, there's a lot on the line. It's a lot of pressure and he, and he kind of bitched out from what I saw straight up. And so it's like, now he wants to jump up to middleweight Apollo. I mean, is that fight happening really? 
they really uh, talking about this? There, there's, no, there's, there's nothing official. It's just kind of like because they had the back and forth, I, people... Paul might want it, Paul, Paul might want it but does, does Schmeier want it? Stylistically, who do you think it favors? Let's say they they both make way, and they they've both had a funny history Paul, with way. Paul, Paul's not that good. I mean, Paul's not that good at wrestling. I was just tired, and he, I mean, he's got a he's got a good initial like burst, but there wasn't much there with good energy. Yeah, it'd be. A, and Shmyer seems like he's a decent level guy, you know, in the game of wrestling and, and grappling. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe it fires. If he can get a takedown, if he rides that bitch, I got Shamaya. <laughs> on, on the feet, I think I think he might be in some trouble. You know, it's a good fight, but I'd favor Paulo on the feet and I'd favor Shamaya on the ground. Mm -hmm. Hey, I was going to also ask, I know like how vocal you are about fighters being treated fairly and, you know, the fact that a lot of the fighters are getting underpaid. What was your reaction when you saw that Nate Diaz was able to turn a pretty rough situation into basically the perfect final weekend for him in the UFC with Chimaev missing weight and him being able to sort of fight Tony Ferguson and finish out his UFC career the right way. It's done for Nate. You know, I mean, mm. yeah, it's, uh, they, they, they tried to feed him, they tried to set him up, and he sacked up and did his thing. So, and, they, you know, he did what he did, and fight weeks, fight weeks, shit happens, and he got, he got, uh, a good opponent, Tony Ferguson, and did what he needed to do. Now, right off in the sunset, make that money, baby. That's it. I mean, he, he went out the perfect oh. way. The the MMA gods were smiling on him, and he just, you know, he he, he beat the system. And obviously, you, you've you been super, super vocal. You've always sort of had the balls to just say whatever comes to your mind, or not really comes to mind, whatever your, your true thoughts and feelings are regarding fire to pay and stuff like that. How do you see that sort of you know, going in the future, do you think you will ever be joining any kind of like, you know, any, any union or court case or anything like that? Um, because it, it's not really a case where you need to do more for the fighters. You've always been outspoken, but I just wonder if there's anything else in the future plans. I've got plans. I've got plans to battle them on any way, you know, right now. So that's not my, that's not my shtick. I'm, I got, I got other businesses to build. I'm working on things and stuff. I'm trying to get healthy, trying to get my body back, and trying to get inspired through that. It's hard to get inspired when you're on your ass with a broken foot. Mm. Well, you know what? I go on your Instagram feed. You're in the gym. You're looking you're looking better than 90% of us who work out every single day. You've got the broken leg. You know, it's 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 you're still inspiring people out there, Luke Rockhold. So there's no doubt about that. I got to ask though, man, because last week we had your good friend Cheeto on the show. We were talking yeah. about a bunch of stuff. It was a real honor for us, obviously. First first appearance on Submission Radio. But I just want to sort of mention for all those people out there who still haven't jumped on the Marlon Vera bandwagon, how 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 good is this guy? Like, I know how close you are friend, friendship-wise with him, but how good is this guy? And for those that don't realize, like, how much of a problem will he be for the rest of the division in the near future? It's a big problem, no doubt. Mm. Stop, and he's got you know he's technically getting sound in in the in the in his areas of the weakness. So, hey. The strippers are here. Yeah, hey, the right. strippers. Um, so uh, I think I think he's really. I mean, there's there's only there's a couple guys that obviously are dangerous. Everyone's gonna be dangerous at the top, but Cheetos, he's pretty sound. He keeps himself out of danger in most areas, and. Uh, I think he's gonna press anybody to the to the extent, and he's gonna he's got so many weapons, so much relaxation, and so much energy. Mm. It's gonna be hard for anybody to really keep up with if you only really see it for what it is. And, and uh, right now at the top, I've seen him against some top guys, and it's just like there's weapons that keep coming. Mm. You know, he's just creative, very creative, and relaxed, and energy for days, and technical. So, yeah. I see my boy Cheeto being a big fucking problem. Mm. I love the fact he was talking to us about how he doesn't really care who's next. He just loves just locking in the opponents and going for it. And he's kind of staying out of a lot of the politics that go go on. But I wonder, like, what was your reaction when you saw that Piotr Jan sort of passed on that fight with him and took that O'Malley fight instead? Because uh, Cheeto was telling us how he thinks, you know, that could potentially cost Piotr in the long run with the UFC because he basically turned down a fight with a high ranked opponent with himself. Yeah, I mean, easier fight with a 
just a hyped up opponent. It's a, kind of a smart business play, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, easy fight with a lot of hype. Uh, an easier fight. I wouldn't say an easy fight for him. I think it's going to be tough for him, but but obviously Cheeto, I think, is a different level, and he's proven that before and proven again. So smart move by him, but at the same time, don't talk it unless you're going to walk it, dog. Yeah, I like Cheeto because he's kind of like uh, he's very contrasting. On one hand, in the cage, he's a stone cold killer. On the other hand. Uh, there's a story where he was talking about how he was a little bit drunk and asking Ngannou, like, his dick size and stuff. So I, I, I like that. And you guys obviously have this, like, you didn't see that? He was, like, putting his hands out, like, like Ngannou, like, tell me where to stop. And I think Ngannou was a little bit, like, not really having it. I, I wonder, like, with... <laughs> Come on, Ngannou. Tell us your penis size. What the fuck, man? He was a good mushrooms at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What What's... What's like, cause you guys have a cool friendship. What's, what's a story that kind of encapsulates like, uh, yours and Cheeto's friendship. What's what's a good you and Cheeto story. I mean, we just both, we both like the same area and, and, uh, you know, I, we just got in the gym we, we both have worked in and, uh, he clicked, you have the same ideals and same, same motivation, kind of motivate each other through the process. And, you know, with Jason Prillo and, and Mackenzie coming on there, which got good energy. You know, it's a good vibe. We just kind of control the energy of of the place and only bring in the people that kind of motivate us. And so, uh, yeah, it's, it's fucking cool. Yeah, man. It's super, like, super underrated because Jason Perillo is a low-key legend, but the guy is the most modest, nicest, humblest guy in the world and doesn't get talked about enough. And also one of the nicest dudes behind the scenes, even to us media fans, everyone. So I think he's really changed a lot of fighters' lives throughout his career. One last question from us, Luke, and we'll let you go and enjoy your day. Your teammate, your other teammate, your AKA teammate, Islam Makhachev, takes on Charles Oliveira at UFC 280. And I know you did some training with him over there at AKA for a bit of time uh, as you were preparing for Polo Costa. I gotta ask, man, like, how do you see that one going down? Because very interesting fight stylistically. Charles Oliveira, you know, in his own right, an absolute killer, but Islam Akachev showing us that he's just on another level in his in his previous fights. How do you sort of see this one going down? It's, I mean, it's, I think Islam is a man. He's got man strength, you know. He's got mm-hmm. got man control. You know, when he gets on top, it's going to be different. You know, it's not like he's not Oliver's not going to be able to play his game and whoop around. They're going to, he's going to lock him down. And he's going to start to work his way up, and he's going to smother him. So if he can get to that position, Oliveira's a beast, man, on the feet. He's, you know he's going to throw, and he's going to take, and he's not going to fucking care. He's a demon. So <laughs> um, that's a problem, and there's weapons on knees and elbows, and everything he throws is scary for sure for them. But, if, you know, Islam is no no joke on the feet too, man. I used him as my one of my sparring partners back in the day. I believe from Machida. He was helping me out a little bit. Just I mean, like, later rounds and, and – you need to surprise you every once in a while. So, and um, that's from middleweight. So, uh, it doesn't work like that for, for lightweights with me. And Islam has always been special, just like Khabib. Well, yeah, I was going to say, what is the, in, in the water there in Dagestan, man? Fucking Habib and Islam, these guys that aren't the biggest, but they're just so fucking strong. Uh, I've actually got one more, one more uh, before we let you go. Luke. Water, water, water breeds water, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's- water, water. Water, it's, it's how it is. You know, look what happened to AK, look at teams. It's like we just fucking iron sharpens iron. You know, when one when one thing fucking starts, you know, and it, it affects. Mm. And uh, well, everyone pushes each other to the height. That, that, that is. Yeah, the four kings. Nope. I got to ask though, man, just as we let you go, what did it feel like to win the crowd at UFC 278 in a way that you've never done before and just... I feel like you've never really gotten the respect that you, you truly deserved and going out there and just putting it all on the line. I mean, the way people loved you, I know, I know it wasn't a, a championship belt, but there was something just so special about that moment mm-hmm. where I feel like you finally, through cheers, you finally got the credit that you deserve, man. What, what did that mean to you? It does, you know, it means a little bit. I knew I had it, you know, but um, that was part of the, the journey for myself too. It's uh, people don't like me. They're gonna not like me, and it's just that's how it is, I guess, right? And I was fighting clean. Um, all my fights were pretty, pretty fairly clean. I was just smoking guys, and people didn't think I had 
think it was a pre fight or some shit that I didn't have a dog in me. And I got clipped. You know, I started I did it for the wrong reasons and I had a bad couple fights and I I wasn't it wasn't really in a good headspace and I forced my way through the fight. I wasn't present at all in those last couple fights and so I got clipped and everyone wants to write you off real quick. Right off my whole career. So it was nice to come back and prove it. Prove I got a dog in me. Mm-hmm. It was also cool to see DC uh, there. I didn't, you being able, and how everybody sort of, everybody from that AKA camp able to solidify themselves into le- legends in 2022. And you guys all starting out together back in the day and where you guys are now. So it was absolutely awesome. So dude, as we wrap up, of course, everybody needs to follow you on Instagram at Luke Rockhold, but just quickly, a little sneak peek. Like what are some of the things that are coming up? The fans can get involved with now that sort of Luke Rockhold's taken a break from fighting. Is there any, any businesses, anything that people need to keep an eye open for? We're working. We're, we're grinding, mm-hmm. and building, and we got deals flying. So we'll see. Stay tuned. <laughs> awesome. All righty. Well, there he is. Absolute legend, friend of the show, multiple time champion, Luke Rockwell. Thank you so much, man. It's an honor. Dude, it was an honor for us to watch it. It was emotional. But at the end of the day, like he said, you know, the dog came out and it was a historic night. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Hope the leg feels better. Thank you, guys. Peace. <laughs>